Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Mihang Gabor Takach. I'm, I'm, I'm a psychologist by profession, and we trained ourselves in, in this video making, and we've been doing this since 2007. Uh, and as Peter said, we've produced 500 movies since. And, uh, and I, ha I, I have 20 minutes to, to talk about uh, the gear that we're using, uh, interviewing techniques, and framing and composition which is impossible, <laughs> and, and uh, I always want to tell too much, so I, have, I still have like 60 slides for 20 minutes, so uh, I, I will jump through some of the slides, and if, uh, maybe it will make you curious, and you will come to these trainings to know, to know what the slide was about. Uh, but I think I, when, uh, when we talk about the gear first, I mean, we can play this uh, what's in my bag kind of YouTube video thing. You know, you have these what's in my bag things and uh, I, I will talk about and show you the gear that we have here which is more like a, a professional or more sort of professional gear uh, but we also this is how it looks like when when uh, I prepare for to, to, to bring the stuff here I, I put everything down on the ground to check that we have everything and at that time we had that, that big camera and it was very it was very heavy and now we have a smaller one but we also started with a consumer small camera and you can also start with your iPhone and everything that, that, that's what you're gonna use now and the most important thing is always the content and not the quality but since this is what we work in and this is what we do full-time <coughs> we would like to do it as good looking as possible but that's secondary uh, to the actual content and we had this kind of camera and it was very heavy uh, and 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 when and like you, the new fashion uh, in filming is to use these DSLRs because they make really good quality uh, films. So you can you can get yourself such a camera, but it's also quite expensive. And uh, but it makes such a good such a good quality uh, movie with this nice bokeh. It's called bokeh. Those things, uh, the, the 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 lights, and also Obama is using these these cameras. So they are very <laughs> they are very common. And uh, the good thing is that the, those cameras have big sensor sizes, which makes the image better. Uh, I don't want to go more in, in, in detail about that. But the problem with them is that they look like a Christmas tree if you put everything on them, and it's very heavy. Uh, so, so we are very lucky to have this kind of camera, and we, li we, we like it a lot. Uh, it's it's like that DSLR, but it's a video camera, and uh, <coughs> you can you can change your you can change your optics on it, so you can you can take them you can take them off and put them on, and and different optics will have different different image quality and texture to them, and uh, they look they look even even better and more filmish. And uh, this handle is is an, is an old uh, uh, photo uh, flash handle, and it's it's good to grab the camera with it, and. Uh, yeah, we're not talking about these. The, yeah, so the, you can you can you can spend a whole lot of money on these lenses, and you you develop a certain lens lust when when you want to have a new lens and a new lens, and and uh, it's it, and then and then you suddenly find yourself uh, watching lenses on uh, on your computer at night, and <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit too much. And yeah, it can ruin your relationship. <laughs> So you have, uh, so we have, uh, we, you, you bring a tripod with you, um, and you can see that tripod. The, the, try to go for a, a small, a small tripod uh, or a, a lightweight tripod. What we do is that we go to these old photo stores where you can, where they sell these old photo uh, machines, and uh, and uh, and there, there, there you can grab these old ones, and they are lightweight and they're pretty good quality. Uh, but you can also have these big ones. Don't buy it because it's very heavy and you have to carry it around. Uh, about microphones, uh, there are different types of microphones, and, and the, the, the main point is that you have shotgun mics to put on your on your video camera, and you, then there you can you can uh, record the sound that is just in front of the camera. So that's that's what a shotgun mic is good for. And you also have the clip-on microphones, uh, which uh, which which are like this. This, this is a, a receiver. And then you have you have also this uh, that you put on your subject, and then you you you, you put you clip on a small microphone, uh, so you can so you can shoot from a distance, and you can you can make your you can make your interview like that, and it records only a certain a certain uh, part uh, which is close to the to the mouth, and you can also use these uh, these handheld microphones, uh, which are good in, in when there's big noise. 
you can you can uh, filter out the big noise around so it's good in, in a concert or, or, or in, a, in an area like this if you saw us we were filming with that because then you, it doesn't matter whether they are talking into another microphone over there because then you can you can put it close and you can record it properly and it makes sense to put on windscreen if you're outside because then otherwise it, the wind will blow into the microphone uh, so that's a good tip to do and what we what we always bring with ourselves uh, is here this recorder, which is recording right now. Um, the good thing about it is that you can put it out here and you, you record a really decent sound. Uh, and you can also plug in uh, chords into it. Uh, and you can, you can bring three, three kinds of chords. Anyway, I'll show those chords later with you. So you can, you can plug into the, to the, uh, to the, to the, to the machine these machines at these conferences so you can pick up the proper sound and you don't have to rely on your camera sound so it makes sense to bring with you an external audio recorder you also should bring batteries with you uh, of course uh, monitoring the sound is always very important so bring earphones with you uh, because you never know whether the, the phone is ringing in it or, 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 or not um, so that's a very important thing to do uh, if you're very rich you can buy that kind of protector <laughs> If you're not that rich, you can just bring an umbrella. It works, it works pretty well. And uh, we, we, we are not rich, but we had some money, so we bought that one. And the problem with that was that we were filming in St. Petersburg, and uh, it was, it was uh, cold, and it was raining, and, uh, and I was walking around with it, and uh, the, the, the camera was warm, so the, the, the water condensed uh, inside on that plastic part, and it suddenly started, the, like drops started to collect inside and started to drop. So we had to stop. So better just go for an umbrella, it's much better. <laughs> and yeah, well, you can, you can bring these uh, lens cleaners with you. Yeah, there's also, like, it makes sense to have a, such a headlight, like the one that you see on top of that camera, uh, because in, in dark environments, you can, you can light your subject pretty well. It can be very annoying to light it from very close, but it helps a lot. And you should have a computer to edit your things, your, your video on. And you should have these external uh, drives that, that store your footage. And like one cat can store up to 500 gigabytes of, of footage. <laughs> That's my cat. And so these are the three kind of, these are the three kind of cords that you should have with you, uh, an XLR, an RCA, and a jack cord. If you have these, then, then, then it will work. Mm -hmm. And also, if the technician is helping you, then, then, then you're doing good, and then you, you can record good sound. Now, let's go to, sorry for being so fast, but I only have 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> let's go to framing and uh, composition. Uh, of course, in poor light, the, the quality of your video would be, will be worse, so you should try to light it properly. Uh, don't film against the sun very much, because if, if your subject is here and the sun is in the back, it will be a silhouette, so it will be dark. So try to avoid that, unless you, your intention is to do that, so you can cover out, you, 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 you can make it like, not recognizable, so you can disguise that person that way. Um, what are, like, just the basic thing about framing, and shot sizes, uh, you can make your subject small, and you can close up, you can close in uh, very, very closely. So, normally, normally the, the like when you're doing interviews, uh, normally your shots would be like this medium shot and this medium close up, uh, because that's that's what you're most used to, and that looks good. When when you're when you're when you're making an interview, you shouldn't go too close because th that would look weird, and it would be too intimate and too close. Uh, and, and also in editing, you will have trouble with that. <laughs> when you're making a shot like this or like this, in the editing, you can always zoom in more. But if you do it like this, you can zoom into the eye, which would be, which would, look, I mean, unless it's you're you're very artistic, it doesn't look that good. <laughs> and shot angles, you normally shoot from from the eye level, so not not from below or from from above. Uh, that's the standard thing. Uh, and if you want, if you may want to make, you know, a propaganda movie with someone very strong, then you film from from below. And if you want, want to look someone, want to look down on someone, you can film from above. But normally, you try to set your camera to the eye level. Um, and of course, you can, you can, uh, you can move around with your camera. Uh, yeah, which is commonplace. You can you can move around like this. You, you try to move your from from your full body because because then there's less less shaking, and uh, oops. and you can use and you can use well unless you have this 
you have to walk, but that's also very hard to use. That's a, that's a, that's a glide cam or, or a steady cam uh, that, that makes it very stable. But if you, if, you bend, if you bend your knees a little bit and you move with it like, th like this, then, then you, can, you can hold it pretty steady. It just requires a little bit of practice. It, it makes sense to bend your knees when you're moving because then, so then, then you can move like a tank. Mm. Uh, yeah. One good tip about about uh, using the zoom is that you always want to set you always want your subject to be in focus. So one one good way to do that is to if you have a zoom optic to zoom in on on, 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 on something on the eye, set your focus and then zoom back and you can you can be sure that you have proper focus because if you're just setting the focus here maybe you don't see really the details but if you zoom in a little bit then you see the eye much more and then you can zoom out. So that's one very useful tip that that we're using. Now, one, one important thing with composition is that there's something called the headroom, and that is the space uh, above the head. And uh, you have to be careful with it. This looks, he looks really small if it's too big, and, and this doesn't look good if it's too small. So you should just get a sense of, of what kind, what, how big headroom you would need. But it should be just a little, a little headroom over there, but not too little, not too much. And as you're zooming in, then you're cutting, cutting the head more and, and, and coming in. Uh, and uh, and there's a, there are a couple of, there's one thing that helps you a lot, which is called the rule of thirds. When you divide, uh, you divide an image to three, three equal parts uh, and, and put the important things on these lines or in the crossings, that usually, usually that makes a, a good composition. For example, here, uh, this woman, th this, is, this is the sea level. And for example, here, this couple is, uh, is, on, is on, this, on this crossing. It, it makes it more har harmonic. Uh, it, makes it, it makes it look, it look, look nicer. For example, this image, you don't really see, but this is the sea level. And, and, and you put the subject in here, so you don't put it to the center. Uh, and, normal, and, and, and often you put, uh, you put the eye of the person, uh, eye level, on, 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 that, on, that, on this, uh, line. this line. Um, so that if you keep this in mind, it helps you a lot. Mm -hmm. Also, there's something called lead room, which means that there's always, there's, o o there's always more space in front of the person in the direction where they're looking. And when there's a subject moving, there's also, you should put a li little bit more space in front because that, that makes it natural. If, if she would be here, it would look weird, and as if she's pushing the frame out. So, it's, so always leave more room in front of the person, the direction where they're talking to. And, all right, now you, you know like the basic things, like lead room and head room and rule of thirds, that's, that's basically what you need to know about framing and composition, plus set the focus sharp by zooming in on something. Uh, and now you go to an interview uh, place, where you try to find a you try to find a, a quiet and well lit place. Maybe you unplug the refrigerator because <coughs> it's like I think it's a rule that if there's a refrigerator, it's silent, and when you start filming, then it will start to buzz. So maybe you should try to think about it. And you can also turn off the the phone. We always forget to turn off the phone, but it, no, nowadays it doesn't really matter. But it can be a problem. And uh, yeah, when you're filming outside, it's always better lit. Yeah, this is very dark, but I can read it. Um, and we, we, with Peter, we're working in couples. So he's the one who's interviewing and relaxing the, the interviewee while I'm setting up the camera. And I'm the one who's, who's, recording, uh, who's recording. And uh, when there's too many people in the room, that can be, that can be uh, annoying. So the too many attention on that person can be too much. So it's better to be on our own, on the three of us, or maybe just, just, just few people. Uh, whether he's standing or sitting, it doesn't matter. The, you, you try to find a good place, a good composition, and maybe try to put a relevant background. Um, I don't know, a library for a librarian. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, I don't have to say more examples. <laughs> uh, uh, be careful that there's nothing sticking out of their head. So sometimes, you know, maybe there's a bunny ear in the background, and there's there a bunny ear. And it can be rather annoying, or, 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 or like a line here with the neck, cutting the neck. So you, you, you have to be careful with that. And uh, then you attach the microphone um, and set, get, check the sound. Um, you, 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 you set your focus. 
Um, and you, norm, you, most of the time, you want the interviewee to look at to look at the reporter and not into the camera. You want them to look in the camera when it's a direct message to the audience. Otherwise, otherwise, it, it, they, they look into the look to the reporter. And uh, yeah, it's it's, it's oh, normally it's better to make a wider shot, as I said before, than than a very close shot because then you can use that later. Uh, try to arrive in time, of course, for the interview. Um, we all there's like. You may want to ask for consent, on-camera consent, that they consent for this footage to be used, but we always forget it. And <laughs> normally, like they are giving us interviews, and we're friends, and it's it's all right. And and that's like that. The, I mean, the fact that they gave you an interview is a kind of consent. So, uh, and then what? The first question is normally that we ask for an introduction, that they should introduce themselves, and uh, and. Uh, that's good for, for also for relaxing the, the, the interviewee. They very likely can introduce themselves, so they get confident, and, uh, and then they start to feel that they're able to do the interview. So it's a, it's a, it's a good thing to start with that. And always ask like, open-ended questions, so their answers are not yes and no. And also tell them to include the question in the answer, so that you don't have to cut in your question. Because, yeah, so they have to, they have to repeat that thing, because if they don't do it, you would have to include the question because you don't know what they're referring to, uh, so that they answer in complete sentences. And be careful when you're interviewing, be careful not to say, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm -hmm, just nod, because it, it gets into the, into, the, into the shot. So that's not good. And uh, when you want to hear good arguments, you should always ask, uh, like, counter-arguments, like, like if, like, if, if we want to make a movie about needle exchange, we may ask, like, does needle exchange facilitate drug use? And then they would, they would, explain, they would explain it. But it's, it's also, again, it's common sense. You want, you want to hear what you want to show. And you try to think with, uh, with the head of your, of your, of your grandmother or, or someone who doesn't know much about that topic. So, that, so try to explain it as simple as possible without jargon. So try to avoid jargon. And here in, these, in this harm reduction community, you always hear things like, PLHWA who live with HIV in the PBS group said that the MPGs should be more or something. And then you don't understand the word of it. So you have to tell them to, 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 to say the whole thing. Um, and and you, can, you can even tell them to repeat it again if, if, they, if, they ruined, if they said it like that. And at the end of the interview, we always, uh, we always ask if there was anything else that uh, that might have been that, that, that we haven't asked, or, sh or should have, or, or something that that is that is important to tell, and we haven't asked. And uh, there are also other shot types. So this was the interview part, and there are other shot types. Uh, one, like the best thing in, in 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 film sense is when you're recording action, someone doing something with someone or something. Uh, for, and so that way we had the interview. For example, we have an interview uh, with the mother who is talking about her child, how much she loves the child. And then it's much better if you actually show the mother playing with the child and doing things with the child and interacting with the child as if it's happening, as if it's a movie. That tells much more than a, a simple interview when they're talking about it. So, but it's, it, it, it's of course harder. It takes more time to, to catch that moment. And it, it, it requires more follow-up and more participation, more relaxation, um, and we can't always do that, but we can sometimes do it, and, and that's, that's always very good. And you can also make so-called so B-rolls, which are kind of shots that illustrate the thing that your subject is talking about. So when you're making an interview about the mother, then after the interview, you make shots about the child, as the child is playing, or, or, or if the child is not there, then you're making, you're making shots of, the, of pictures of the child, and then you use that as an illustration of what they're talking about, so it's more interesting. You can also make b-rolls of the city, like here at the conference, we went out and made some b-rolls of the city, and uh, yeah, pictures on the wall, a dog or something, that makes it interesting. Uh, that's the b-roll, we call it cutaway, when you're making shots at the, s at the same time when the interview is happening, so you're showing the hand or the eye of that person, and you can also make uh, reaction shots, which is the reporter. So you, you, you film the reporter reacting to the, to the uh, interviewee or, 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 or the audience looking at the, at the presenter, for example. And uh, basically, that, basically that was it about, about these three topics in like very quickly.
Uh, maybe you have some quick questions in this <laughs> one and a half minutes that I still have. Yeah, you're over time. But go I'm for over time. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Then we go on to Matt. Matt <laughs>